You want to be a software engineer? Everyone is learning how to code right now. The field is as competitive as ever, more competitive as it's ever been, especially in the midst of this recession. But how can you make sure that you have an advantage over the competition? You can do this by better understanding what a day-to-day -day life looks like as a developer. What will you actually do on your job? What do you do on a day-to-day -day basis? Why is this so important? This will save you time from learning the wrong things, focusing on the wrong things, learning how to code as a spying developer. Right now, let's get into the video. But before we begin, I want to thank today's sponsor, Coding Dojo. Coding Dojo is a coding bootcamp that helps people who want to get started with a career in tech become software developers by teaching everything from full stack development to even up and coming careers in cybersecurity, data science, and even data engineering, which are fields that actually I work in right now. Coding Dojo has spent considerable time researching tech that builds a strong programming foundation through their three stack approach. While other boot camps focus on one stack and limit the learning difficulty to accommodate a larger class size, Coding Dojo's three stack curriculum provides graduates with a comprehensive skill set and has helped nearly 9,000 other students land careers in tech post graduation. Students will develop the ability to learn new technologies and programming languages easily throughout their careers. Plain and simple, their curriculum is designed to make this the first and the last boot camp you ever attend. To learn more about Coding Dojo and what they have to offer, check out the link in the description below. The life of a developer is pretty amazing. It's amazing because we have insane pay. Depending on the company you work for, you can have great benefits. Depending on the company you work for as well, great work-life balance. But what is it that you actually need to do on the job? Number one, let's start in the first thing. Yes, it's obvious, coding. That is the main source of income as a developer is our technical skills, right? Coding. But the better question is what kind of coding as a junior developer getting your first job i think that developers tend or aspiring developers tend to think that you have to be a mastermind at everything at your first job that is not true at all whatsoever at your first job i mean actually not aspiring you're a junior developer now you will receive a lot of help i think this is really important to understand and what i mean receive a lot of help when i first got my job all right i had no one mentoring me by the way there was no one helping me that I can go to to ask for questions, to ask for help, which sucked. But the culture of tech has changed the last over couple of years. And one mistake that I made that I never want to make again is that <sighs> I never asked questions. I thought that when I got my first job as developer, that I had to be the best developer possible, that I already had to know all the HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, that I had to know PHP, that I had to know my SQL, that I had to know how to work with databases, that I had to know how to work with APIs, send API calls, send a post request, send a get request, you name it. I didn't need to know all of that, but that was my biggest mistake when learning how to code. And I think that's why I never felt like I was job ready in the first place because I thought I had to be good at everything. But as a matter of fact, you don't. As a junior developer, everyone will know your particular skill set because they interviewed you. They know that you are not at a senior level, right? You're not a mid-level engineer, but you're a junior, you're learning. But people love working with junior developers. Why? Because you have no bad habits. You could learn from the better engineers that work at the company. So what will you do? A lot of learning. You will build a lot. But your first couple of months in that company, you are learning, you're building small things. And so when you are working your first job as a junior developer, the first couple of months, if not six months, honestly, next couple of years, but primarily your first year as a junior developer, you're going to make a lot of mistakes. But your job is to ask as many questions as possible from the senior or middle level engineers that work above you. Next, a big mistake that I think that people make way too often is that they think that you need to be a master of CSS as well, right? No. And again, this applies to the first topic the first point but what i'm trying to talk about is yo like as a javascript developer front-end developer you don't need to be the best at css first of all you're probably going to use a framework or a library like tailwind css to help you build your designs or whatever you need to do but i think a lot of people think that you need to be a master at that no not at all so at your first job yes you're asking a lot of questions and you're learning number two next more than anything, more than just building, I guess this, this is a part of building, is that you will be Googling everything. You will not understand everything there is to understand when it comes to what you're building, right? So you're gonna research and Google a lot. And, and I think that a lot of people think that you'll be coding eight hours a day. Yes, we're coding eight hours a day, but we're not writing code nonstop. I feel like more than half of a day, 70% of the day, rather than coding, especially as a junior developer, it's more researching, Googling, making sure that you figure out the things that you need to do. You figure out the coding you need to write before you even write code in the first place. Number three, 
you will not receive the most difficult problems out there. They will throw easier stuff at you. I think that as aspiring developers, you automatically assume you have to work in the most difficult task, the most difficult tickets when you're working your first job. Obviously, that won't be the case. You'll be given the easier things and then they slowly build you up from there. But people think that that's why you need to be a perfect developer right away. And that's not true at all. And it's just so important. This is why I think so many people take way too long to apply to their first job, missing out on so much potential money. Last but not least, you will have a lot of meetings with your manager, right? Well, if you're hiring manager, meaning the manager that yeah, you work under, this is very important. During this time, your manager wants to understand what you're thinking, what you're going through, your thought process, what you're struggling with, what the projects are giving you. Now, your goal is not to act like you know everything. Your goal is to write down all the questions you might have, right? If you were not able to solve these situations on yourself, write these questions down and bring these questions to your manager. I think what a manager likes more than anything is not someone who acts like they know it all or wants to pretend like they know it all, but a manager likes an aspiring developer, a junior developer that works for them, someone who shows that they're learning, that shows that they're hungry, that's not afraid to show that they're making mistakes. But these are mistakes I made on my first two jobs. If you don't ask a lot of questions, people will assume that you know it already. And then if they assume that you know it already and you take too long to complete that task, and then you tell them it's, I couldn't complete the task because I didn't really know how to solve the problem, that makes you look even worse. It makes you look like you're wasting time, you're being irresponsible. If you don't know something, and let's say it's, it should take 30 minutes to finish something and it's already been an hour for you and you haven't completed it, then you ask for the help. These are all mistakes I made at my first job. And these are things that I had to do my first job, but didn't do. So please make sure that you do it yourself. Anyway, thank y'all for watching. I'll see y'all in the next video. Peace.